Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I am bringing you today is called Morning Cops. It's, it's now an 8x8, eight eight, but you might notice that um, it was originally an 8x10. And I'm going to give you the whole rundown, I'm going to give you the whole story here. This is a redo, and... Uh, a couple things different about what's going on here today with this video. This is only going out to people on my mailing list, and that's you, if you're hearing my voice. Also, uh, you will be able to view this video if you're in my store, and I think I will probably put it on the blog as well, but what I'm not doing is putting it on YouTube and broadcasting it to all of my subscribers there as much as uh, I value uh, every subscriber on my YouTube channel I've been sort of racking my brain for something special I could do um, on the mailing list and also to help promote my store and my painting practice and especially with um, people that have um, you know done me the kindness of of joining my list so this is my plan and I very much welcome any comments uh, about this you can um, always shoot me an email at uh, actually I have a new email now uh, it all comes to me through uh, the website but you can also reach me at mfrancis at tonalistpainter.com if you have any questions comments or concerns about anything uh, let's talk about this painting morning cops so I originally painted this back in 2014 um, you could probably see that it's on the smoother types of boards that I was working on back then uh, which was a um, basically it was a very nice hardwood laminated onto MDF which I was very very into the mixture of the natural grain and the brush strokes and I still really love that uh, look and feel however I get uh, more from having a bit of texture as long as it's not too omnipresent um, so these days I texture all of my boards but back then I was only texturing 5x7s and I would have done a 5x7 study for this Anyway, I, I thought this painting had a lot of good qualities to it. I thought it came out pretty well. However, the uh, you're going to see one of the reasons it went from 8x10 to 8x8 was I felt as beautiful as the sky was turning out um, above the trees, it, it compositionally felt like it wasn't balanced to me. So, oh geez, about five minutes from now you're going to see what I did but that's just a little bit of a heads up there so uh, back in 2014 I was really doing only 8x8s 8x10s 5x5s or 5x7s every painting I did I would do a study for and what was in my brain what I was thinking at the time was that since I wasn't doing a lot of uh, plein air painting that I thought maybe doing a quick study would be kind of a good thing to do and so uh, I did a heck of a lot of paintings uh, back then and some of them turned out really well um, a lot of them uh, didn't and I have to say uh, like this is uh, 8 by 10 and I really <coughs> pardon me do like <coughs> pardon me geez sorry I really do like the 8x10 as a vertical. Oh wow, getting a text, getting an email. Yeah, sorry about that, sorry. <laughs> uh, well, well, it's happening to all of us now, isn't it? Um, anyway, back to what I was saying. So. Uh, I like the 8x10 format for verticals. I was doing 8x10s as horizontals, and it's nearly square. At least that's how I think about it. And uh, I learned to like it. I learned to be comfortable with it. One of the reasons I went to the 8x10s uh, was because of the 
um, there's a, a really good availability of different sorts of frames that are already made that are really nice looking in that size range because it's a standard photo uh, size range going back to gosh gosh who knows when I mean when I was in the um, art business as a commercial illustrator a lot of comps were referred to as 8x10s so 8x10 was a photo size and it was often put out for all sorts of different uh, uses and purposes and so it's still a really solid photo frame size and my thinking was well I can get good I can get frames reasonably and I can just practice these sizes and get, and get good and I did a lot of paintings and I got better and that leads up to the whole story of the redo which is you know we're talking uh, 2014 is now five years ago I don't think I actually would put the uh, the month back then maybe I did ah that was June yeah so we're almost there um, five years ago wow time flies but I've done a heck of a lot of paintings since that time and I've learned a heck of a lot as well and um, some of the things I did right I still do and then other things that I didn't have as good a sense of um, I've gotten better at and in this particular case I had a thought in a vertical um, that well uh, my reference is working out here I'll just add a bunch of sky to the top and that was not so good of an idea like <clears throat> just looking at this painting we're doing right now it's it's way too weighted in the sky and so um, one of the very first things I did when I started digging around last year 2018 uh, I don't know when I really revised this let's see Oh, February 2018. Um, going through boxes, looking at things. It would have been an 8x10 vertical, and I was looking at it thinking, wow, that sky, that's too much of it. And so I had my good friend uh, Joe at the Quarry Art Center where I work. He's got a like a wood shop, and um, I had asked him to cut, a, cut it off. Whoa, that's... Hi, sorry about that. Not sure. So I was looking at the uh, the video as it's playing, and you're you're look, we're looking at it together. And as I'm I'm talking here, and for some reason I had stuck a completely different <laughs> painting session in the middle of this archived uh, video. So I just I just chopped that that chunk out, and um, what you're looking at now would be uh, most likely my second pass on this painting that I did back in 2014, and. You know, it's a very simple motif. I thought it was pretty strong. I do this kind of thing a lot, um, but you're going to see, if you haven't already, because I think there's a little video preview, uh, what I did to make this much, much stronger, and so much so that I was um, actually was in the hands of um, somebody uh, that had come to my studio that was interested in buying some paintings and. Uh, had gone through um, some of the works I have there, and uh, then we're very, very close to buying it. And I know, and I know it's very attractive, and so I was thinking, well, this would be good to get up in the store. And I'm trying to get more and more things up in the store and have a good, uh, fresh selection of work there. I know that I've been a bit uh, negligent in doing that, and uh, my only excuse could be uh, that uh, I'm really into making my paintings. In making my music and less so into keeping up the thing the store and the um, the other marketing efforts but um, I've determined that this year I'm going to make a better effort in that regard and uh, doing this video today is part of that uh, also I really like um, having the video up in the store with the painting I just think that looks good and I know that if I was looking at paintings and thinking about it, I would love to watch the the video presentation. And uh, you know, I just think it's it's great. And someone the other day was asking me about, um, you know, well, why do you videotape your work? And you must have an awful lot of videos because you know and we, they know I'm prolific. And uh, ah, you can just see I cut it right. And also, 
I'm starting to do some extreme glazing, um, but just real quick, uh, what I told them is I'm really interested in recording the process because that is a linear thing, whereas the painting itself, once it's done, is not a linear thing, it's a culmination of all of the things that went into it. Um, anyway, uh, when I sit down to do these redos, I don't always have a plan. Actually, here, the extent of my plan was that I was going to cut off that extra sky. Also, I was thinking, well, it would be good to make the whole bottom dark, and that created a much more solid composition, and I really think much more solid. Sometimes I might have uh, painted a river or a path in there, and I definitely thought about that on this, but I felt that it had enough interest with these trees, uh, this little copse of trees, that um, I could just do the dark on the bottom thing, and... Uh, so that's what I did, and then I decided to get into some extreme uh, glazing as well. And um, really just push it off into the golden realms. And that gets into the other reason I thought this might be good to do today, because I just posted uh, on YouTube yesterday a video for a uh, painting called Golden Stream, which was painted gold from the onset. But this painting, as you can see, was more naturalistic in tone um, and then I brought in the extreme glazing uh, to really push it into a new direction and I have a lot of fun doing that I just think it's <laughs> it's just really fun it's fun to engage the imagination and it, for me it's also fun I've had you know I had that painting around for several years and um, I don't think I ever even put put the original up on YouTube or anything. I I was uh, just doing a heck of a lot of paintings, but um, uh, it may have been in a gallery for a time, or it may not. I may have had it up in my studio gallery, but either way, it didn't uh, go anywhere, and so um, it was good enough to hang on to. Um, but it needed some ex something extra, and so what you're seeing now is that process, and it's very intuitive it's very instinctive and like I said uh, I don't always know the next thing I'm gonna do I'm just kind of winging it but I think I get a quality in the work there that's very special and very magical and that's the kind of thing that really interests me I like paintings that have that sort of quality so uh, there you go anyway we're getting it's sort of close to the end, but um, hopefully uh, you don't have to worry about liking this video because it's not going to be on YouTube. Um, it's going to be in my store, it's going to be on my blog, and it's going to be in your mailbox. And I uh, really appreciate the uh, support I've been getting from uh, people that follow my channel and people that have joined my mailing list, and hopefully uh, you dig this and... Uh, um, you know, just appreciate getting something special and different that's targeted uh, just just for you. Yeah. Um, what else do I have to say? I know this is going a touch long today. But that, feel free to let me know about that if you think this is maybe too long. But uh, I wanted to, uh, in fact, a lot of times with the redos, I used to just show the redo portion. I wouldn't even show the original bit. But... I think it's illustrative and I, I, I'm really attracted to showing the history of the painting because it's, it becomes very cumulative. You know, this painting would not exist and look the way it does without having been what it was before and that would include even, you know, cutting a bit off the top. So as it stands, it's a very beautiful uh, painting with a very beautiful glow and uh, I'm very happy to present it to you today. And uh, like I said, let me know what you think. Um, keep following me on YouTube. I'm going to be doing what I was doing there on a regular basis anyway. So uh, this is just a bonus for you. And uh, I'd let you know I appreciate you. And I'll be back next week or maybe the week after with another exclusive video. So stay tuned for that. Go to my channel, go to my shop, and go to my blog. Take good care and stay out of trouble.